Well, here we are again for another episode of the Startup Junkies podcast. I'm joined today by a real ensemble cast of characters. I've got uh, Matthew Ward from the Startup Junkies team, Caleb Talley, our director of marketing, and my business partner, the managing director of the conductor, Jeff Stanrich. How are you guys doing? Doing great. For a rainy day. If I was any better, oh, I'd be twins. <laughs> Fantastic. But our star of the show today is, is one of our, our good buddies, serial entrepreneur, awesome cyclist, French and, and uh, Arkansas champion cyclist. He knows a hell of a lot about cider and wine and Pomo and Calvados, amongst other things. He's off to a new venture. We first met uh, Marshall Trudeau when he was with the uh, uh, Arkansas Small Business Technology Development Center. He's been kind of a pillar of the startup scene over the last several years. Marshall, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you. Well, listen, to get this party started, we give every guest the opportunity to kind of give their personal elevator pitch. So in, in you know, 60 seconds to two minutes, give us kind of the lowdown on who you are and where you're from and what you're doing in Arkansas and, and anything else you want to talk about. So my name is Marshall. I will not, you don't need to say my last name. Uh, Marshall is fine. Um, I moved in a state in 2015. Before that, I was in France uh, with my family and we decided to come here for my wife. My wife did a PhD in nanotechnology, so something very specific. And we are very pleased to see Arkansas as an opportunity for us. So I just follow her and um, I discover what was entrepreneur when I came here. Even if it is a French world, people forget about that, but it's a French world, um, we don't know what it is. The true spirit of startup is really in US and, and, and the dream, dream country is true. Uh, you can really start something from scratch with only a few friends and, and just grow that to the point where it's a real company and, and you can live from that. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. Life is everything for me. I value my friend. I value my family. I love cycling. Um, been in the cycling world since I'm a kid. Um, any kind of level from, from the amateur to the professional level. And today I'm, I'm seeing that as an asset. Um, and I really enjoy to ride with friends like Jeff sometimes. <laughs> You're going to have to bring a tow rope if you go with Stanrich. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We saw, I saw a, a, a video of you recently where you were doing a, I think it was 11% climb and, and the, the, it, you were saying that you were maintaining 22 miles an hour or something. And a lot of us look at that and it's like, well, that's where yeah. I would, I would be tacking back and forth to try to make it up that same hill. And I'd be listen, dead. I, listen, I can do, I can do 24 miles on an 11% decline. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> if you get in a really good talk, right? right so, so, so the, the story behind that is I didn't know I was recording. That's a neighbor who passed by and saw me and recalled the climb. Um, so after that post, another cycling came and went faster than me on the climb. So three days after I came back again and now my average is like 23 or 24 in that hill. So wow. Um, you can, it's next to my house, so I cannot lose that one. I need, I need to be the fastest in that <laughs> so, did, so did you put the polka dot jersey on when you got to the house? No, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's the right location to climb and, and, and sure. get on. So I'm really happy about it. Oh, that, that's great. Uh, the, tell us a little bit about the current venture that you're working on. I know you're, you've just joined an exciting team and you're making a lot of progress. So tell us about what you're doing at Vasugenics. So Vasculogenics is a medical device company. Uh, we make that widget. So people feel like it's not something crazy, but it is. Why? Because if you need a heart, a stent in your heart, so basically the surgeon is taking wire, putting inside your artery and go all the way to your heart. As today, they don't have the tools to see what's going on. They have, they have a contrast image where they see your heart, but it's not, it's not an perfect image. So the widget they use is here to push the wire all the way to the right position in order to deliver the stents. The difficulties with that is those widgets, that's a competitor widgets, are very, very difficult to maneuver. They are very small, not very a lot of size to, to maneuver that. What we came with is something a little bit better where you have more grip and you can lock in place with only one hand. 
our competitors need to hand. So when you lose efficiency, it's because you lose the focus on your screen. You don't, you lose where you are. And when you lose two hand, you can basically push more the wire or, or pull back the wire. And you need to restart. You need to look where you are and restart from fresh. So it's, 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 a, it's a convenient tool for the surgeon to do a better job with, with pressing a stain in your heart. Oh, that's, I mean, well explained. And this was, this was a business where you were an advisor, right? Weren't you advising them when yeah. they were going through their graduate program? So um, that started as a student project. Um, I was looking for technologies for the students um, to just compete with. Um, and that technology came through a surgeon who said, hey, I have a brilliant idea, but I don't know how to do business around it. So I decided to took four students on that, on, that, um, on that project. And more we went into the details of the project, more we were looking at that as a potential business. I mean, there is a big gap between what a student project and a real life project. Um, but more, more and more, we, time was passing and more and more we are doing this competition and more and more we realized it was possible to do something with it. To the point where Noah, the currency of the company, had some financial commitments of investment, of, of investor, but he didn't have the, 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 the team around him. So that's why he came back to me and he said, hey, are you, are you willing to join the team? Because you are here from the beginning, you helped me from the beginning. Now it's a real company. We need to deliver an output for our investors. Can you, can you come full time with us? And I had to make the hard choice to leave my job and, and start a startup life, I would say like that. Um, it was not the easiest discussion with my wife, but <laughs> here you go, I'm, I'm on it now. So it's very interesting. Oh, fantastic. Guys, jump in there. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, competitions. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I'm assuming you're um, referring to the Governor's Cup and some of the other um, college pitch competitions. Yeah, so um, the big player is Fayetteville on this competition. Um, they always travel all around the U.S. and outside of the U.S. Uh, to do those competitions. So we always see Fayetteville as, as a big player. So I had, a, I had a model, I would say like that, I could follow. Um, on, on our side, Little Rock, UA Little Rock, always did the Governor's Cup and stopped right here. That was enough for them. So I, I had a meeting with the Dean and, and I was looking to do more than just one. So, um, but we never did that. So we, we didn't know what would be the output because it's, it's one thing when you compete in the state, it's something when you compete at, the, at an international level. So I remember in January, we sent the team to Canada for the first competition. And we play third, I believe. And that's where I realized we had a good product, a good story, and a good business plan, and of good where we can do the same track as Fiatly. And we can compete on the same competition. And really the day we realized we had something amazing was the day we got Rice business plan um, application um, results. And they select out of 400 business plan, they select only 40, 42 to come to Rice. And um, they select us, UA Little Rock, and Fightville was not selected. And I remember um, it was a little bit of shock because we were like, why Fightville is not in where we are in and we, we are the outsider, we should not be here. So a lot of people around us told us, hey, do your best, just go there, just, just do your best, you will see what you can do. And in our mind with a student, we are like, no, no, we can do better than just our best. We can qualify, we can do multiple rounds, and maybe we can go to the final. Um, so we passed the first round. Out of the, two, out of the 42 team, um, half of them were out, and we make, we make semi-final. We didn't make final, we didn't make the top six because our tools require a very small amount of investment, where those judge are mainly VC and not business angel, because they are looking at something a little bit bigger than us. Um, and they decide to just, to just say, no, it's not an opportunity we are looking for. Um, we got all good record, but it was just not aligned with, with the judge, I would say like that. So uh, we make a top 10, we didn't make the final, but we make a top 10. So we are very, very pleased um, to have you, Little Rock student, making that level um, of the competition. Hey Marshall, what are the future plans for Vasco Genics? 
So we are going to release the, 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 um, the talk device in July, August. Um, it's very difficult with the coronavirus to forecast when the hospital will be able to work with us. So we have, we have some milestone we need to reach. Um, from a manufacturing standpoint, the device is ready. We can manufacture at that scale. Now we need to pass FDA regulation. We have few regulations because we are 510K exempt, but we still need to follow design control and some biocompatibility tests. So we are doing those right now. Um, and if everything is good, by July, August, we should be on the market with the device. So we are very close. We are very close to revenue. When, when do you think general availability will, will occur? Is that early fall? So we would like to go as soon as possible on the market. We want to do a pilot test with our hospital partner first to make sure you know everything is okay. We don't need to do any modification. But as soon as we have a green light from them, we will distribute that. Um, so we guess two or three weeks after we are able to make the first batch, we'll have that green light from them and we will to spread that. Um, and, and the sales pitch is very easy for, for, for that device because basically we just need to give it to the surgeon. They look at it and say, oh, that's easier for me. Can I have 10 of those just to try? You give them 10 and after they say, hey, can I order those? Because they don't need an approval from the hospital. It's a preferred surgeon item so they can directly ask for it. I mean, it, it's, it's 10 bucks, less than 10 bucks. So they don't, they don't need permission from the higher level from the committee to get the sample so, or, or to order. So it's very easy, it's very straightforward process for us to have clients. So I've had the privilege of knowing your um, CEO and business partner, um, Noah, since he was a junior in college and I uh, have watched him progress. Of course, he participated in our first uh, health sciences bootcamp. Talk a little bit about the transition of working uh, with a, a young aspiring entrepreneur as an advisor and then the transition to working as a member of the, of the executive team. So I know Noah since the beginning, since he showed interest for entrepreneurship. Um, he came to uh, my office and we discussed for hours about, hey, this, this is serious. You can really do something with that. So it took almost a year for him to realize, yes, it's a skills, it's maybe a, a class, but it could be more than that. After that, he really changed and really become a CEO, I will say like that. It was not academic anymore. It was, it was a project, a life project for him. So I was able to be on his side at every step of, of, that, of that maturity level to the point where um, we had to raise money. And um, he asked me my help. And that was a very tricky position um, to help him, but in the same time be his, be his professor. So um, at that point, I did my best to mentor him but without crossing the line. The day we crossed the line was the day we decided to be business partners mm -hmm. and just jump together on that deal. And what we did was we did a one page document with everything I liked, everything I disliked. And it's the same on his side. Like that we know how to interact with each other because my expectation is not the same expectation as him, especially with my culture, with the French culture, who are very different than his American culture, we have to define those lines clearly in order for us to not um, cross over and, and just, just fight to each other. So as, as today, those one page still help us just make sure we, we work well together. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, Noah is an optimist guy where I see everything positive. I'm, I'm a pessimist guy where I see everything as yes, Maybe, maybe not, maybe we need to change that. So working together on one specific topic help us to see both sides. And I think you get better output if you have someone who challenge you. So he challenged me and I challenge him on a daily basis to get the best output. And that's why I feel Vascogenix is going to be a very successful company because we really think at a 360 view from the worst scenario to the better scenario and everything between. Very so, good. Now it's a, it's a great story and it's, it's kind of the, I, I would say a model or a template for how we'd like to see ventures start with interesting technology that's licensed from one of the universities, uh, entrepreneurial founder that comes through a program, more experienced seasoned executives join and then you actually have success in taking it to market. So, 
it's been inspiring to watch this go through the various stages from kind of a kernel of an idea, health sciences boot camp, pitch competitions, business plan competitions, and now actually making moves on raising money and getting into the market and getting trials going and whatnot. So it's, uh, I can say one, one, we're really glad you're here. We're glad you're on the team, but we're excited to see where you and Noah both take the company. It's uh, it's a good story for sure. Thank you. So let's talk cycling. So, so all the, all I, like the that. I like that. All the many, the many things you're involved in, and I, and I know you've you've achieved a lot within cycling. But talk a little bit about how your your cycling life is going to intersect with your professional life. How do you see those coming together over the next several years? Are you are there business ventures you're going to be trying to get involved with and engage cycling, or how do you see that working? So so. Let me just structure that a little bit more. For me, cycling was always something on the side. Um, it helped me to pay my school, it helped me to pay my rent, but I didn't see a career in cycling. For me, it was more like a hobby or stress relief. Um, and I stopped cycling from 2010 to 2015 because at that point it was not something I enjoyed. When I came to US, I started to have a lot of stress because it's very difficult to move from one country to another. And my cycling coach decided to surprise me for Christmas and send me my bike over here. Um, so I had no choice. I had to ride again to remove the stress, to enjoy a little bit life and make friends because people forgot how difficult it is to make new connection and new network. So cycling was really for me a way to have a different world, I would say like that, or different network. Than, than my professional life. But US show me you can do both. You can have business with sports, where in Europe it's very tricky. So um, the passion of cycling is growing more and more in, inside me. Um, like I say, I was very passionate in France. I stopped it and now it's coming back very hard. Um, so if, if I have a joint venture or if I have a venture who uh, can align with that passion, I think I will do something with it. Um, it will be after vasculogenics, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested by that. Um, and there is a lot of opportunity uh, from a business standpoint in the cycling industry right now with, with everything going on. I mean, if you see the number of company, companies going bankrupt, it's, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there will be opportunity in the next two or three years with that, with that specific industry. And the trends are favorable. Cycling is, has been described as the new golf because you get, you get a lot more, uh, I guess, a physical benefit than riding around in a golf cart with a case of beer. You know, if you're, if you're going to go out for a 40 or 50 mile ride, you're going to get some good out of that. So it's, it seems like it's on trend. Yeah, we, we can ask Jeff how he feels after a long ride. I'm sure he's, he's tired, exhausted, and taking a nap on his sofa after that. So <laughs> You know, you know, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out where he said that he used cycling to pay some of his bills in his school. I, I only have the cash flow going one direction with cycling, and it's not that direction. <laughs> you just need to go a little bit faster. When you go a little bit faster, <laughs> well, people will give you money. Trust so me. Let me ask you this. Can you even go 18 miles per hour? I mean, can you even go that slow? <laughs> I will for you. I will for you. I swear I will stay with you. I may just stay next to you, but no. When, when I ride with my wife, and and that that is very important for me. Oh, oh did you hear I that? Ride with, when I ride, yeah. When I ride with my, I'll have my wife ride with you, Jeff. <laughs> yes. no, 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 but you know, it's this strong is one thing, and I think cycling is really great because you can have you can have some someone who go really fast next to you and go at the same pace. Running is different. Running is very difficult to change pace. Yeah. But cycling, you can do that. So I always, always try to go at the same pace as other people. I don't see the value of going fast and, and putting those people in a position where they don't feel great about it. Yeah. So it's when, when I'm doing... When it's I'm a doing social what, sport as well, right? Sorry? It's a social sport as well. It's a social sport. And if I want to train, I go alone. If I want to have a group ride and be social, I go with the group and I follow the pace of the group. Yeah. So if we have some sprint or whatever, I will, I will do it a little bit and, and, and just, but I will not try to put a pace on that group. That is not my job. That is not, that is not the way you should do it. 
Mm -hmm. um, so people really see me as two marshals. The marshal from, from the training who is very nice, very easy to deal with, and the marshal from the race who is just very aggressive, really fast, who don't talk yeah. to you and just want to cross the finish line. <laughs> So, you, you want you want to crush the competitors' souls. I know how you ride. <laughs> when you go fast and they go fast and they feel pain and you smile at them, <laughs> that's it. So I just to watching, show them. I just finished watching Thirty for Thirty on ESPN, the the two episode series on Lance Armstrong, and I feel like it's being replayed back to me now. Yeah, no, so it's it's exactly that. So, well, right. so. So, yeah. so th that's actually that's actually kind of a good segue. And and you you were originally from the Normandy region in France, right? I work in the Normandy region. You work so, in the Normandy region, okay? Yeah, so I was from Southwest, but right. because I had a lot of factory to to travel, I right. one in, in in Normandy. Um, so I discovered the culture because it's another culture. Um, I know France is the size of Arkansas, two time Arkansas. But we have so many clusters with so many different culture that each time you travel 100 miles, you discover something new. Um, so, so unlike Lance Armstrong, who used the performance enhancing drugs and whatnot, for you, your performance enhancement came from good cider, nice wine, calvados, nice pomo, good food, right? Yeah, but, but I, 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 need, I need to explain. There is a big difference between me, my speed, and, and Lance Armstrong's speed. I mean, Jeff may be not be able to follow me very long. I'm not able to follow Lance Armstrong one second. Like, like it's, it's two <laughs> steps up. So um, you, can, you can go at my speed with a lot of training. I'm not sure I can go at his speed, at Lance Armstrong's speed ever, because it's just, it just another world. So um, I feel food good sleep and, and be good in your mind is, is what drive you, um, what drive your motivation to be better and better. So you, know, you, you talk key. about, you talk about your mind. One of the things, and I've just been cycling now for about two years. Um, and, uh, I spend some time up on Greer's Ferry Lake, which is a, uh, very hilly region. Right. And, uh, I have observed just in the last year, you know, I'm able to take some 20% grades there, uh, and, and 12 and 15% grades for extended periods that um, a year ago I was not able to do. And it, and it dawned on me, so we, we spent our vacation there this, this summer because we were not able to go out of the country because of COVID. And uh, I, I probably averaged, I don't know, 150 miles a week for those two weeks vacations, which is a lot up there because it's, it's so, uh, there's so much elevation gain. But what dawned on me is that I'm not in as much better shape this year than I was last year, but my mindset is different. And yeah. that mindset, I believe, what went on between my ears was as much about me climbing those grades as my physical conditioning. It's, it's, it's the body is a very complex thing. I mean, it's, it's a soul, a mind, and, but it's also a biomechanical thing. So both are going together. If your mind is not great, your body, your, your biomechanical properties will be not able to deliver. And, and you know how so, I figured that out, that my mind was playing, uh, was playing a bigger role is because my son-in-law was riding with me and he played football for the Razorbacks for two years. And I was not going to let him climb that hill and me not climb it, right? And, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's so, what it dawned on me. Let, let me rephrase that. When I was at my topest level when I was 19, 20, um, my speed was going down and I didn't know why. So I start to train more and my speed was going down and I start to train more and my speed was going down to the point where I took my back, put it on the closet and I say no more. Hmm. So the breakup with cycling was not my body. It was my mind who decide enough is enough. You cannot, you cannot do too much of that. And, and go to school in the same time. So I would say you should train less and have a good mindset or good mind than, than the opposite. So now I really enjoy cycling because I have friends, it's fun. Um, we go to a different state um, and I rediscovered what was racing in US because in France, it's the opposite of US. Cycling is declining. We have less and less people and we have less and less races. Mm -hmm. And 
you cannot meet CEOs on your bike ride. You can only meet the same people as you who have been in the cycling world. So I was very shocked first to see a CEO from a bank talk to me like a friend where I didn't know him at all. And I was like, really? Like, we are friends? They say, yeah, we bike together. We are friends. I was like, wow, that will never happen in my country. Hmm. And, and the second thing is when you start to do those crits, first, it's very short. It's 45 minutes to an hour. But there is people coming and there is a lot of beer after the race and it's very social where in France, it's, it's not like that at all. You pass the line, you won, everyone hates you because you won. <laughs> everyone leave. <laughs> so it's, it's different. So I really, really enjoy cycling in the US. Um, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd like to use that to ask a question if I could. So, so I've spent quite a bit of time working in France and Germany and, and, and several different countries in Europe, uh, the UK and and also, you know, obviously I've spent most of my career in the U.S. I'd love to get your take on the, the most significant differences in work culture and work environment between your experience in France and your experience in the U.S. Tough one. Uh, <laughs> tough one. In France, um, it's never enough. Even if you overpass your goal, even if you demonstrate you can do that, you can, it's never enough. And I remember during my annual review, um, they put me that goal the first year, I got my bonus. They put me that goal the next year, I got my bonus. To the point where we multiplied by three, what was the capacity we were able to do. And at that point, I told them, it's not, it's not even feasible anymore, but they, 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 they always try to push you. Uh, in US, I think it's the opposite. They give you a goal right here where you can do that. And everyone clap at you because you succeed your goal, but you didn't give the best of you. So I feel like sometimes we need to push a little bit more people. But understand at the same time, you don't want to push too much people because it's complex. Um, life in US is very complex um, because you have family issue, you have, you have financial issue. I mean, I understand all of that. So um, I think we should do a mix of both. Where, where we need to push a little bit people, but manage them correctly for them to deliver a good job where they're part of it. Um, so, yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's good context. Caleb has been waiting to weigh in here. I just want to know when your uh, HGTV show, uh, Marshall Remodels Homes, is going to launch. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I should have done more video and more picture, but um, it's, it's, it's very difficult to post. I'm too proud of what I'm doing. It's not, it's not that I'm too proud, it's just, it's from my hands. I mean, it, it, was, it was a dream for me to have a house where I feel safe. I know for America, it's not crazy to have a house, but for French, to own something is very, very important. My parents never own any house or any property. We always rent because it was easier. It was easier to manage. So the day I bought that house, um, I was like, I want to do something amazing with it. it it's, it's my baby. I want to take care of it. I want to give the best. I want to give the best material, the best of my time. And when, when, when I talk about my house to people, people are like, yeah, we don't understand because we just buy something. We move in two years after we want something different. My mindset is, hey, I built it from my hand. I don't want to move anymore. I may have to, but I don't want anymore because I feel happy about it. And I like every single details of what I'm doing. So it's one more time, it's a difference of culture. So that's why I'm not pushing too much information of it because I'm just afraid it would be a culture shock. So. Well, it's been, enter it's, it's been an entertaining to, to watch on the various social posts and whatnot. Those of us who have ever gone through a remodel or are currently going through an endless remodel <laughs> really really appreciate your commentary and and seeing the progress so Ooh. well listen listen I, we're, we're kind of at the point where, where, where we need to land the plane or or park the bike so to speak in this case and we'd like to ask the people that have come on and exposed their journey to us uh, particularly people that have had really interesting careers like you if you could take all the knowledge that you've accumulated at your current age and give some advice to your younger self when you were starting out your journey, what would that advice be? Um, school give you, will give you one part of the school age, but don't wait anyone to teach you anything. Just, just 
be a learner. First thing is learn how to learn um, because you have good information and bad information. So you need to find a process to clear what is valuable, what is not valuable. And the second thing is find a way to just store that information for one day. Because maybe you are young, maybe you don't need that information, but the day you have an opportunity, um, you, you, you need to seize it, you need to take it. So my advice will be don't, don't, don't wait anyone, just, just feel free to do what you want to do. And if it is cycling with business, it's cycling with business, but just don't let anyone telling you, you cannot do that or you should not do that. And my issue was coming from France, we had a system where they always tell you what, what you should do. When I arrive in US, no one tell you what you should do. So it's freedom. And I was a little bit lost of that because when you don't have guidance, coming from a world where you have too much guidance, you are just lost. So I just feel after five years, I'm at the point where now I can try something I really want to do and I can really put my knowledge on it. So um, yeah, just, just enjoy what you do and, and just do it well. Uh, it's fantastic. And, and if, if people want to find out more about what you're up to at Vascugenics, what's the best place for them to, to find out more? Um, LinkedIn, Facebook. I mean, they can just reach to me directly. I mean, you know me, Jeff, I always respond to email and always try to help everyone. So um, just just give me something to eat and let's discuss. That's, that's, okay. That's, and that's, it, that's is it vascugenics.com? Is, <laughs> is, is that the yeah, best place for people to see your is our website and you have, you have a contact at the bottom if you want. Fantastic. Um, so, yep. Well, I'll, I'll reach out, schedule a time for a, for a, a cycling coaching session, and uh, I'll, I'll bring a good bottle of French wine for us to finish off with. There you go. Yeah, French wine only. Not, 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 <laughs> not, 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 not bucks, whatever. No, 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 new world, no new world wines. It'll be for- <laughs> Marshall, thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate your time. It was great catching up, and, and stay safe and stay well, and we look forward to, to watching your adventures as you go forward. Thank you so much. You bet. Take care.